Hi there. Um, one of the videos that I've been wanting to make for a little time now is how I use the Obsidian note-taking app to prepare for and run my D&D &D games. Um, I've tried a couple of options um, and eventually settled on Obsidian as my current favorite for doing this. Um, I started off with Notion, um, which is a really great app. Um, it's, I started exploring Notion after I decided to stop using Evernote for my notes and it seemed like a pretty good um, next step from Evernote. I'm not going to go into much detail about how I use Notion because uh, Mike Shea of Sly Flourish um, created a really great video about how he uses Notion to prepare for and run his games and it's well worth watching that video if you're interested in using Notion for D&D game prep or even just for your, you know, if you're a player or just notes in general. Um, I have a link to that in the show notes. One of the other apps that I've also tested out uh, and enjoy using is Dynalist which is an outlining application. Um, it's, it works with Markdown, which is one of the huge appeals for me, and it has quite a lot of uh, really terrific uh, functionality and flexibility built into the app. Um, I used Dynalist for a little while and then eventually decided to shift over to my uh, preferred note-taking app, Obsidian. Uh, Obsidian, of course, is um, a, it's a freely available Markdown note-taking app uh, that has the benefit of your notes being stored locally on your machine um, and what I found is that it works really well for me for D&D game preparation and for actually running the games as a dungeon master. So before I get to that I'm going to show you what I was doing in Dynalist just so I think it's a useful comparison between that and uh, Obsidian. So in Dynalist here's an example um, this is a campaign that I've just recently finished uh, with my party uh, it's a campaign that I created from scratch. It was my first game, so my first homebrew campaign. So it's by no means uh, an excellent example of a campaign, but I'll just show you how I prepared for it. Actually, before I get to that, I'll take a step back. Initially, when we started playing, we were playing in a starter kit, the Essentials kit from uh, Wizards of the Coast called Dragon of Ice by a Peak. And what I would do there is I would supplement the, the um, adventure notes in the books with my own notes and I would do those, I would create those in an outline form like you see here. And one of the nice things I like about an outliner, outliner is that it's really easy to kind of add notes as you go. Um, there's a terrific mobile app, so I found that I would be sitting somewhere and I come up with some ideas and just add some more notes to it. Uh, you can move stuff around like any outliner. Um, and one of the things that I really enjoy about this is firstly that it works in Markdown. This is just a Markdown link for an internal link elsewhere here in my notes, but it uses Markdown links and renders them. And you also have this great feature where you can just sort of add notes to individual nodes. And I would then create notes for individual sections um, you know, to supplement the notes that I have in the books themselves. Um, and even add links here going back to the source material on D&D Beyond, which we use for our game prep. Um, what I then started doing is I then moved over when I created my first campaign, I started creating that here in Dynalist and I added the structure as you can do with you know uh, this is something that Outline is obviously really good at is just adding structure and then adding notes in a structure so I had for example campaign links you know an overview of the campaign for myself with the various key p uh, parties involved and possible tie-ins and introductions into the campaign I broke the campaign down into individual chapters and each chapter would have individual sections and then as I would work through it I would then go into each part of the game so for example what you can what you can also do with Dynalist which is also really helpful is you can zoom into a section so you're not sort of caught up in all of this um, clutter that's not relevant to what you're working on at the time and I'd add notes in with heading styles uh, links over here going back to different things. Uh, what is this one? This is a link going back to a wiki uh, on uh, the Forgotten Realms fandom uh, page. Um, you know, various sorts of links and links back to say D&D Beyond over here for encounters that they have. You can add images inline which is really great. Um, and then of course, you know, I'd add my map and then key it into individual sections here that would then expand with my notes about you know what each part of the you know what what the encounters would be in each part of the dungeon and this works fairly well 
um, and you know, I especially like things like these internal links so I can go to any node here and grab a link to that so you can get the link for that node and you can then link back to it so this one for example links back to the entrance which is this section over here and you can even see backlinks so what, what else links through to the entrance you can see down here at the bottom of Obsidian uh, excuse me of Dynalist and this is actually very similar if you used if you've used uh, Rome Research this is actually um, this will be pretty familiar to you although Dynalist doesn't have quite the the feature set and the power that you have in Rome Research um, so what I started doing soon after using Dynalist is I started exploring Obsidian as my as a note-taking app uh, what appeals to me about it is that it also works with Markdown um, my files are all stored locally in, in Markdown files and I sync them through Dropbox but you could actually sync them through various things and I started thinking about what you know Dynalist is really great for the game prep but I felt like I needed, I felt like it was a little bit too structured for me, at least in terms of a hierarchical structure, and I wanted a bit more flexibility with that. Um, so what I did is I moved my my campaign over to Dynalist, uh, excuse me, to Obsidian. And this is just, a, you know, the main campaign note, sort of the main index note for the campaign. Um, and if you're familiar with uh, with uh, Markdown syntax, you'll see different heading levels, various links. Some of these links will go back to my uh, Dynalist notes, and that's one of the great things about Dynalist and even Obsidian is that you have internal links um, for the individual apps, so you can actually click through to those apps um, and open up your notes. And this is especially the case here in Obsidian, where you have the ability to copy a Obsidian URL, which is an internal app link um, and as you can see I've got different sections um, you know the protagonists my antagonists uh, useful links and other resources characters and so on and something that you may notice here is that a lot of these links have double brackets these are internal links or what we call wiki links um, if you display them they look like ordinary links but if I then click on them, and I'll use this Grace here, one of the characters as an example, it then opens another note here in Obsidian um, with information about this particular character. And then, of course, this links back to, say, campaigns or the main characters page that I was on um, that you can flip through to. And I've got characters, active, inactive. And this is kind of, this is basically a, almost a port of the, the Dynalist option that I have. Uh, where is it? Over here. I basically ported this over to Obsidian and I have these links over here. And then each of these um, internal links here will go through to, for example, he has an NPC who I used. This is just a very bare note that I have without much information. It's just basically a link through to a character on D&D Beyond. So you can have stubs of notes or you can have more detailed notes. For example, this is a main NPC in the game. Um, and I have a link to the character sheet that I'm maintaining on D&D Beyond as long with a link to uh, a monster stat block and some more information about this character. And the, what, the great thing about Obsidian is that you can use these internal wiki links to then link through to, to connect to these different um, pages or different characters uh, throughout the, the notes that you have in your campaign. And you can actually see here on the right hand side I have a graph section over here and this is the main hub and these are all of the things that link through to them. Um, if I go through to, I'm going to use one of a you know, more recent section because this also has to do with the methodology that I'm approaching that I, that I was using to uh, prepare for my games. So in this particular part of the game, by this point I'd started using or trying to use the uh, Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master approach to preparing for D&D games. Um, I have a link to the book, at least to the page on uh, the Sly Flourish website about the book and it's, if you play D&D, &D, you know, it's really well worth checking this out because it enables you to really streamline your game preparation. I can't say that I'm, I'm doing that quite the way that Mike Shea intended, but this at least is my uh, attempt to get started with this. And what I do is I have a template. So for example, I could create a new note 
um, I have a set of templates here so here is a lazy DM prep checklist and this is based on the book uh, where you have uh, I've added an, a, 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 a list here to an ex to an experience points um, spreadsheet, spreadsheet that I have on Google Sheets but then you do your character review and I've got list to, list of all the characters I have you know my strong start uh, scenes and you've got a couple of scenes that you outline secrets and clues fantastic locations important NPCs monsters treasure and so on um, and then what I would do is for each part of the game I would then generate a new note with this checklist and then work through that and what what you wind up what I wound up with at least is something along the lines of this type of note where I have my links so this is just going back to a Google Sheets um, sheet where I track experience points that I'm, that I'm awarding um, I just I found that just, just a lot easier to do and this is something that, that I was doing in Notion as well creating a table with, with um, experience points and that you can do that in different ways I just find that Google Sheets just works well for that um, a link to the characters and again these wiki links are just links going back to each character's note that I have in Obsidian elsewhere in my vault um, and you can just keep doing that um, you know you just keep referring to the same characters and what you're actually doing is you're linking back to the same note so as you build on that note so as I expand on this particular note then this note becomes just a lot more useful I pack more information in there and I don't have to add as much information in line in my individual notes uh, because unlike uh, Dynalist, which is very much a hierarchical structure for the most part, I mean, you do have the ability to link through to different uh, nodes and different uh, notes that you have in Dynalist. Uh, Obsidian tends to be a lot flatter and less hierarchical in the sense that everything can, a note can be anywhere in the vault and you can just link back to that. And it, it doesn't really matter if it's in the same vault structure or not. Obsidian will pick it up as long as it's inside your vault. Obsidian will pick it up and it will find that note and enable the link through to it. And it's a really great way to keep building on uh, locations, to build on different sections. And you know, so I'll give you an example. So here I have uh, an internal wiki note, uh, wiki note. Excuse me for a Drow Shadowblade, which is a a uh, monster that appears or a antagonist who appears in the game um, and I've got a note here also in Obsidian for the, sh the Drow Shadowblade um, I have a link going back to the information about this antagonist in D&D Beyond I've captured the stat block that I've, I've placed here just for inline reference and I've got a bit of information here for about, about the weapons and you know where I, they're encounter where I have encounters with them. Actually, this there are a couple more encounters because they make an appearance later in the campaign, and you can continually update this and refer to this. And when I'm playing a game, for example, when we have an encounter with this character, I'm literally flipping between different notes, kind of like this, to pick up on information that I want to use here. In addition to using the D and D Beyond uh, combat tracker and that sort of thing. Um, when it comes down to so one other thing that I found really useful and this is probably a bit of a divergence from the lazy DM approach uh, because what Mike Shea suggests is when it comes to fantastic locations you know give yourself uh, some some descriptive points about it just to create that kind of atmosphere and just to give you something to work with and describe and sort of get a get a feel for the location and then lead the party through that what I also found useful at least for me was to now also add notes for some of the locations that I might want to come back to or might become more involved locations in their own part so a good example that for that of that is this is Ormvor's castle um, so I have a note for that so in addition to having this description over here about the castle I have a note dedicated to the castle because this this became a, a location that the party was exploring for a couple of it for you know a couple sessions um, and this links back to you know this, uh, some of the ideas about developing fantastic locations Forgotten Realms castles Lonely Moor um, and this could be a location that I might want to come back to in the future so I don't want that necessarily uh, located specifically in this game and only in this particular campaign because it could be a cam you know location that the party might come back to down the line uh, and it may not be specifically for you know that campaign but what I did here is I would add in 
uh, a bit of information about it. This is uh, a link through to a wiki link uh, in uh, the Forgotten Realms fandom. Um, I have another page in my notes for the Lonely Moor, and I even have a page here for Marasha, who was the former resident of the castle, um, where I would include some information about Marasha. This is more specific to their campaign, and the party actually defeated them. Um, with again some stats from the Dungeon Masters, uh, from the DMG, from the Dungeon Masters Guide, and links here to spells that they may use as an example, and these are all on D&D Beyond. But it's one resource for this NPC that I might want to refer back to later. But returning to the castle, what I found helpful there is to add in some images for atmosphere to use to describe it. Um, I have a map here that I actually repurposed from the Lazy Dungeon Master Returns Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master uh, workbook that I repurposed this for the for the castle itself, and then I have a bunch of notes that are all keyed into uh, many of the locations on the map, uh, and some of these will link. Many of these links will go through to D and D Beyond. Some of these links will actually go through to other notes that I have. For example, here again, links to party to members of the party. And you can ha have uh, highlighting. You also have the option, of course, of, of using ob uh, Obsidian as an outliner. So that includes things like being able to collapse your points if you wanted to. If you wanted to sort of tidy it up and focus on specific sections, you could collapse your individual sections. And that's an option that you can enable in, in uh, the Obsidian settings itself. This over here at the very bottom is an interesting section because this is actually an embedded section from another note. And if we take a look at that, we'll see here that's actually in the Marasha note. Uh, and this is the section over here on defensive actions. And what I've basically done there is I have, let me just flip back to that uh, castle note. What I've actually done there is I have embedded this section about this character in my note over here. So as I change that section over here, it will actually update the embed. And this is super helpful for where I don't necessarily want to keep repeating myself. You know, there's that, there's that, uh, there's that saying, don't repeat yourself, dry. Um, and I found that this was a great way to do that. And when I actually started using that approach, I'll see here, I'll show you here in one of the later games. This is of the last game in the campaign. Um, where I have, instead of repeating the party, so as you can see here in, in this part over here, part five, I just you know copied and pasted the links to the party members, but that the list of the party members changed over time. So instead of repeating that, what I would do is I would just expand that in my source note over here to include an, a new addition to the party. And I would just embed that, let's go back over here, I would just embed that in my note. And what that looks like is it gives you a nice embed. It's a little offset, but it gives you an embed and you could click on these links and click straight through there. So it's, again, it's, it's really a really dynamic way to embed the content um, and add it in line with all of the other stuff when you're viewing it. And for the most part, while I'm working with a game, while I'm running a game, when I'm actually running a game, I'm in preview mode. So I'm looking at it like this, with the links and everything rendered, uh, and everything is clickable. I have various links over here for different NPCs and different parties. Again, these are all individual notes, because again, we may refer back to these down the line. Um, and it's, it's adopting a kind of uh, almost like an atomic note principle. So in there's a note taking methodology called Zettelkasten. And one of the ideas that comes out of that or may even be specific part of the methodology is this idea of creating these atomic notes where you have smaller sections of content separated out into individual notes that you can then refer back to. And you can see a lot of that here in this local graph here for this particular note where I'm referring back to various um, various other notes that in turn have their own links to those notes. Um, and there are very few notes here that don't actually have some kind, you know, a, a set of their own references that go back to them. Uh, and then click, or what you can also do here in the graph is clicking on these will actually open those notes. And this is part, so this note, for example, is part of a broader section about 
uh, the town of Avaresca um, that I uh, was working with with the party. So again here you have you know maps you can add all sorts of media in here you can actually also add other embedded content like audio clips if you wanted to you could add uh, YouTube embeds uh, there's all sorts of things that you can add in into Obsidian which makes it one of really my, my favorite note-taking app at the moment um, one of the things I mentioned in Dynalist is that you have some notes that have uh, linked mentions. So the Obsidian version of that is here in my sidebar. This is the way that I've set this up and I can see all of the notes that may link back to this particular one and I can also head back to those at any point too and see you know what that particular section was. So this is this is just my you know this is just my uh, you know the way that I'm using Obsidian at the moment to prepare for my games. Um, on the whole I'm trying to use the Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master approach, although I think I'm probably a little bit, I'm adding a little bit more detail than I necessarily should, but at the same time I think the ability to add these almost satellite notes um, that you can then refer back to and link to in other sections of your of your campaign notes or, whatever, or general notes is a really useful way and a really valuable way to, um, you know, very, really valuable way to use something like Obsidian to prepare for your D&D games and to actually run the games. So I hope that this is useful and informative. Um, you are welcome to drop any comments below in the video or you know, if this is on my site then you're welcome to comment. Um, I'm, you know, I hope you found this was useful.